just waiting a second to make sure the public has a good connection. Okay, we're all set, Glenn. Okay, and I do see Malcolm and Peter in there. Okay, good evening, everyone. This is Glenn Richards, Chairman, uh, speaking. <clears throat> Pardon me. This is the May 14th, 2020, Report Historical Commission meeting, uh, public meeting done virtually, as you obviously know if you're, you've joined us. Um, <clears throat> I'll, what I'll do is I'll start with a roll call of the people, the commissioners that are on the call, and uh, just mention a couple of quick rules that are, uh, if you're looking and see the page that uh, Andy Port is displaying uh, on the Zoom meeting, you'll see there are some instructions in there about raising your hand. That is for when we get to the um, public hearing sections. Uh, if you want to speak, you may do so. What you do is there's a button, at the, uh, it's usually at the bottom of the screen, it says uh, something like raise hand, and you can use that to let us know that you'd like to speak and, and we'll uh, enable your audio at that time. So you can do that. It'll be a, you know one person at a time type of deal. Uh, during the rest of the meeting, your audio from the attend from the uh, public is, is di disabled and just the uh, commissioners are able to speak. So uh, I'll get started. Um, I'm gonna do a quick roll here. Um, Malcolm Carnwath, Carnwath, uh, I believe I saw you. Has, has he been promoted yet, Andrew? Yes, I've promoted them. If they'd like to unmute themselves, they're able to uh, participate. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to unmute yourself manually, guys, to, to be uh, seen here. Uh, Peter, are you with us? I am. Okay, good. That's. That's Peter uh, McNamee. Um, Joe Morgan, you with us? Present. Okay. Um, Patricia Pecknick? Present. Okay, Ron Zimba? Yes, here. Okay, you're here. Uh, Christopher Fay. <coughs> I know I heard here. you earlier. Yep. Present. Okay. okay, thank you, Chris. And uh, we have Gretchen Joy on as note taker, and Caitlin Sullivan is also on um, <clears throat> on the call. She's with the plan, uh, planning, one of the city planners. And obviously, uh, myself, Glenn Richards, the chair, and Andrew Port, who is hosting the meeting and will be displaying the um, visuals. So that's Andy's screen you're seeing there that is showing the agenda right now. <clears throat> Sorry, I. But, Clearing my authority, I'll try to mute myself and I'm about to do that if possible. So um, the, uh, the first item on the agenda is uh, the, well, Red Coke construction, Care of Lisa Mead. I didn't see that on one of the other um, agendas, but anyway, it's, it's on this one. I believe it's a routine matter. They, they, the applicant has requested to continue to 528. Um, uh, do I have this correct, Caitlin and Andy, that we're just um, doing a uh, quick vote to okay or not okay the uh, continuation of that? Yes, correct. Okay, so I'll go ahead and make the motion myself. I'll make uh, a motion to continue the matter at 3-5 three, three School Street, um, requesting a continuance to 52820 20, uh, without objection and uh, without uh, uh, sort of looking for prejudice. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay, I heard two there. So uh, since this, you can only be heard, we're gonna do the vote by a, a roll call. That seems to work out best. So I'll uh, do that. So uh, I'm just gonna take you in the order that you're showing up on my screen here. Patricia Picknick? Yes. Mr. McNamee? Yes. Okay, Mr. Zimba? Yes. Mr. Fay? Yes. Okay, <clears throat> Mr. Morgan? Yes. And I think that's uh, Malcolm. Did you disappear? Uh, are you still with us, Malcolm? For some reason, I'm not seeing on my list anymore. Hmm. Well, we seem to have lost Mr. Malcolm, but uh, <clears throat> it's okay. We have a, a quorum to vote through, to pass that the vote without him. Hopefully he can rejoin. Okay, so that motion is passed. <clears throat> that will be continued. Uh, the next item on the agenda 
is uh, 12 Harrison Street, represented by Michael J. Gray, um, who is the applicant and I believe also the resident there or owner. Uh, this ha is a matter that was continued from April 23rd meeting. Uh, I'd like to resolve it one way or the other tonight if possible. So uh, Mr. Gray, uh, I know you've submitted updated and revised plans. <clears throat> so I think what we'll put, uh, what I'll do is I, I'll let you go through them. Uh, let me, uh, let's see if you're in the attendee. Yes, you are uh, in the attendee list and you've been enabled for audio. But all I'll say is to introduce you, I'll just say that the matter before us here is a public hearing. Um, it was the public hearing for a demolition delay was triggered by the roof line change, uh, you know, according to our ordinances. So the the job of the, or the task of the historical commission will be to either impose a demolition delay, delay. or approve the plans as submitted. And I should uh, and I want you to know um, that if the demolition delay is imposed, that doesn't mean the end of the project. It does just means that. Uh, with there's you've got a year to um you know either update and revise plans if there are issues with them or actually wait the entire year to to uh skirt the process or to um kind of uh bypass requiring approval from the historic commission but hopefully we won't need to make that happen so now i'll turn it over to you mr gray and you can um walk us through the changes you've made hi thank you again i know this was not easy last couple of weeks and a lot of energy was you know uh, appreciated on everybody's part um you know we we did you know make the concessions um i know i i brought on i think my architect and i actually just hired council uh to help me through the next process just because it's kind of you know, just kind of keep myself out of it a little bit. Um, I don't know if they're present and they wanted to speak on the behalf. I'll take you through what the changes, um, or better yet, I'll just let the architect, um, if they're listed, it's Barry Gannick and Mark Griffin. Okay, yeah, I see Andy, Mark. are you there? Mr. Chairman? Yes, and uh, both have been allowed to speak. Okay, so I'll, I'll let them speak and I'm here if, if anybody needs me to, to speak. All right, thank you. This is, may, may, I, may I speak? This is Mark Griffin. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. Um, hi, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Uh, Mark Griffin, uh, an attorney at Finneran and Nicholson, um, 30 Green Street, New Report. Um, here speaking in, uh, on behalf of uh, Michael Gray. Um, I'm late to this process, obviously, but I have uh, reviewed the documents um, and from what I've seen, unfortunately, I was unable to access minutes from the April uh, 23rd meeting. Um, I guess they're just not online yet. Um, so I didn't get the full flavor of it, but I understand from speaking with my client and reviewing emails uh, that uh, there were some changes to the plan uh, that uh, the commission had requested at the last meeting. Um, and that in the interim between that meeting and now, uh, Mr. Gannick and Mr. Gray submitted revised plans, which, um, you know, fulfilled uh, many of the commissions, but commissions request, although not all. Um, I think at this point, uh, I'd like to turn it over to um, Barry Gannick, the architect, in order to describe uh, what the changes were uh, and basically go through those plans with you, if you don't mind. Okay. Good evening. Yeah, that would Barry. be fine. Sorry. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Gannick. Barry Gannick, Gannick Architects, uh, One uh, River Road in Carlisle, Mass. Uh, the changes we had made um, upon request included the lowering of the roof where we had shown it previously being raised three feet. It's been uh, reduced to 18 inches. Um, we took the brick off the uh, end walls of the house and uh, that would be sheathed in uh, clabbered uh, siding like uh, the other elevations of the house. We removed um, uh, transom light and side lights uh, at the front door entry. Um, and we are showing on the uh, elevation sheets on drawing A1.3, six over six windows. And I apologize that the rendering doesn't show it that way. 
uh, a graphic problem or it's a computer problem in my office and we are correcting that. But the intention, if you go to drawing A1.3, you will see the windows as requested uh, by the commission as uh, being all six over six. Okay. Um, and I think those are the major changes. Uh, Mike, did I miss any? Uh, there was the uh, detail of the bracket fascia oh, yes. under the roof, which the we bracket, had. Right, the brackets uh, were removed and the fascia board is there though. You can see the note in the upper right of this drawing right here. It's a layered white fascia board, but it's a 10 inch deep. That's not clabbered going up there. All right, what, what, is, what, is, what do you mean by layered? I was curious. Well, there, it, it's, um, there's a 10 inch board and then uh, halfway up, there's another board, a smaller board about five inches uh, put on top of it flat. Yeah. That um, it's just a built up fascia. You know, fascias often step out. Uh, they aren't just plainly flat. Right. Right. Yeah, and I, and I can uh, sort of understand with, with the raising of the roof, the, how that fascia space there is obviously a bit wider than uh, originally built. Yeah, and it's a typical detail. It's, uh, it's a transition uh, element between the, uh, the wall and the roof coming down on top of it. Is there anything more uh, you want to say about anything? I'd like to uh, speak to it, if I may, Mr. Uh, Mr. Richards, Mr. Chair. Yes, um, and who is that? Is that I did not recognizing the voice. Is that Mark? This is Mark Griffin. Griffin, thank you, Ken. So um, I, I get. Uh, I guess I just want to point out uh, that this application is for although it's for um, a demolition permit, um, the application is focused on the roof line change. Uh, and notwithstanding the roof line change, uh, the applicant has provided uh, numerous concessions to uh, materials in the home that are not related to the roof line change. Mm -hmm. um, he has not necessarily provided all of the changes that the commission uh, requested at the last hearing. Uh, specifically, I believe it's the decks that was an issue. Um, you know, you'll see the decks on uh, the plan uh, because the applicant has chosen not to change them. Um, I would submit to you that the jurisdiction for roof line changes uh, for the historical commission in the DCOD is very narrow. Um, there's a carve out in the DCOD, uh, basically, demolition delay is um, not applicable except for certain very narrow exceptions, one of which is roof line changes. And so these decks are not on the roof. They don't affect the roof line. Um, I would submit that the, the jurisdiction of the commission ends at the roof line. And so the uh, changes that have been made to the building have been made because the applicant is seeking a discretionary permit and seeking to satisfy the commission in order to obtain the demolition permit. Uh, however, the applicant um, does not believe that these decks should be removed uh, and is seeking approval of this plan with the decks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Um, um, well, it, uh, okay, I, I appreciate that point. This is Glenn Richard speaking again. Um, quick question on the materials. Um, the roof is described as um, black synthetic slate. Could you tell us what that is? It's, it's referred to, this is Barry Gannick speaking. Um, it's a faux slate, it's called, um, looks very much like natural slate um, in texture and color um, in the quality and the longevity as well. Uh, it's much lighter though, it's uh, easier on the structure. So would it be safe to assume that this uh, will not, does not have a similar appearance to those roofs that look almost like uh, plastic, you know, you might see like, no. Putting aside the color, like on McDonald's or something, where it's quite shiny and smooth, like plastic. Not at all. Um, from the street, you will not know that it is not real slate, honestly. Okay. 
Okay. Um, well, I'm pausing here for a second because I was led to understand, uh, first of all, I, I hear your argument about the, the roof line change that, uh, you know, and how that triggers, the, you know, this whole hearing. And um, the, I was led to understand that um, if we, we need to give the um, building commissioner uh, the go ahead to grant the demo delay to do the demolition that's work that's required in order for you to do your new construction. And, but as part of that, we are, we take in, are allowed to, you know, take into consideration the plans uh, in their entirety. Now, um, if that, you know, that's my understanding from Jennifer Blanchet and I think, to, to, uh, you know, I know Caitlin and Andrew Porter both on the call, um, if they have a uh, knowledge of the, you know, the intent, or not the intent, but the letter of the ordinance beyond that, I uh, would love to invite you to, to comment on it. Um, oh, sorry, uh, this is Andy, go ahead. Did, did you want to? Sorry, it's Patricia, I just wanted to say that the applicant did explain in the last meeting that the roof line change, including the height of the L, was driven by the desire to accommodate the deck. So the decks are connected to the roof line change at Mr. Gray, according to Mr. Gray. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a very good point. Um, I, I agree in part with what Attorney Griffin has said. Uh, I think that to the point you just said, uh, Patricia, I think that the fact that uh, this project does involve a change to the roof line, and as you pointed out, is integrally connected to or seems to be have a relationship to the desire to have the deck. Um, the commission does have jurisdiction to impose the delay. Um, that's up to the commission, of course, to negotiate or work out with the applicant um, and see if there's some sort of revisions that are needed um, and whether or not the delay is appropriate. But uh, the commission does have jurisdiction to impose the delay um, simply because of the roof line change. Uh, as you pointed out, it perhaps seems to be tied to uh, perhaps accommodating the deck space. I don't know if the applicant could speak to that, maybe. Well, I, I, this is Mark Griffin, may I speak? Yes. Um, I, I, you know, that's really something of a stretch. Uh, the fact that the roof is being changed for something doesn't mean that the roof line change, uh, that that something is a roof line change. Um, the only connection is the roof line is being changed because of it. The uh, roof line itself, where the roof sits, how it looks, I mean, that's the actual uh, crux of the decision making, I believe. Um, and, and the reason I come to that conclusion is because these uh, narrow exceptions from the DCOD uh, were included. And had, had we gone past 25% worth of, uh, you know, building wall uh, demolition, um, we would be doing a DCOD uh, special permit, which would um, have jurisdiction over all of the things that uh, have been uh, pointed out by the Historical Commission uh, and items that they've chosen to negotiate with the applicant for changes. And so it seems to me that the clear intent of uh, carving out that exception was that you focus on those items that the DCOD will not have jurisdiction over. And so the roof line itself, in other words, the, the actual line of the roof, um, the height uh, that it's going up, uh, how that roof line fits in with the original uh, structures, form and shape, um, and perhaps, uh, you know, the um, significance of it. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't see the connection between uh, the deck. The reason for the roof line change really seems to be irrelevant to me. Uh, Mr. Griffin, your, your, uh, Mr. Gray did uh, explain to us during the last meeting when we asked about uh, raising the roof on the main, the main camera roof and asked about the height of the L and he did say that those changes were driven by the desire for the roof deck. So he, he is the one who, who made that claim. So that's why we're having a conversation, I guess, about the roof deck. I don't remember that don't conversation. I was more of a raising the roof to get the head height inside of the third floor is what I remember saying. Well, 
I agree with the Have chair it? that we are we are looking at the plans in their entirety and not looking at just the main roof line on the main house. What? This oh. is Andy. Uh, just to clarify, so you know, again, just to highlight again, there there is a portion of there is a portion of what Attorney Griffin has uh, has said that is correct, which is that the commission's jurisdiction and decision is about whether or not to allow that roof line change at this point um, or to impose the delay. Um, clearly, there are other elements that are proposed on the plan, um, and uh, there may be a relationship between those things. The commission's decision ultimately has to be based on whether or not to allow that roof line change there. Um, but um, you know, the, the, it's a fair point that there there is um, you know the deck itself is not within the commission's jurisdiction per se, but the fact that the structure is being modified to raise the roof does place this project in the commission's jurisdiction, which is why the applicant's here. Um, you know, I don't take issue with this particular application or set of plans, but but it, the commission does have jurisdiction and that's why the applicant's here because it does involve a roof line change to the primary structure, irrespective of the deck. Okay, uh, thanks, Sandra. And um, and I, I believe there is, uh, if, if I'm not saying that that decision is going to be made because I want to hear from the rest of the commissioners on this. But even if, if it were, I believe there's uh, an appeal process and all that good stuff. But let's not jump jump the gun on anything yet. I'd like to hear from my fellow commissioners on how they feel about um, the uh, the whole thing. Would anyone of you like to chime in? I know you're there. <laughs> I, I, one of my questions is that since the house on the form B is uh, listed as a two and a half story house and Mr. Gray has explained that he wishes to restore the, the gambrel um, because, and that he wants to raise the height, it was, it's down to a foot and a half increase from three feet. That, the interest in raising the roof is to increase usable living space. I can't figure out on these plans what the square foot living area is now and what it will be with these changes. So I, I'd like to know that. I wonder if, Mr. Gannick, do you have a, a handle on on the, the gist of that or would that be something that... I, I I don't have the numbers right in front of me for uh, the actual square footage of the house. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, you know, I'll, I'll speak for myself for a second here. The I'm, I'm kind of, of of two minds because on the one hand, um, the, the roof line as it currently is, I don't think anyone would dispute the fact that uh, <clears throat> the addition to the back was not well executed and or designed or both. And um, the overall effect of the changes that uh, Mr. Gray is seeking to make may very well be an overall improvement with, with the possible exception of the, you know, the, the roof decks and all that, but that's, you know, people have differing opinions on that in particular. I would note that uh, part of the, you know, that, that there are now actually two roof decks that started out as only one, and they both are quite visible uh, from both the uh, the street and the, the rail trail, and they also necessitate those um, doors from from the I guess there's it's a sort of a dormer on that uh, addition, um, which which you know the, I I'm guessing that uh, the fact that there is a door required there um, that in itself does isn't dictating the height. Um, would I be correct about that, uh, Mr. Gannick? That the door is not dictating the, the height? Yes, the, that the, the height of the, the those roof lines on the dormant addition are, are, would, would not change if those were windows instead of doors. Correct. That is correct. All right. So, um, Does anyone else on any of my fellow commissioners have a, a comment or Glenn, an this opinion? Is Peter. Yeah, go ahead, Peter. Um, I, um, going back to what you said a moment ago, I agree. Um, 
that overall this is an improvement. Uh, and I think Mr. Gray um, is trying to take something that's uh, pretty unattractive and, and has been poorly done in years gone by and improve it and make it a livable space. Um, the, the proposal that we had at the last meeting had a lot of things that made it look very awkward, which many of which have been adjusted. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at this as it, it's, it's not a perfect restoration or preservation of the historic <laughs> structure, but an improvement of the property overall. Um, do I like the roof decks? No, um, but they don't necessarily offend me. Um, they're not in keeping with the style of the house, but the style of the house is very forward. The, the, original, the original structure is right on the road and that's the most prominent feature of the house. Um, I'd, I'd be interested to see a rendering. Do we have a rendering from the other corner? Um, I don't think that we do, but- um, We don't right now. Okay. Um, as to how the house presents in the back, I know that it fronts the rail trail. Um, that, that doesn't weigh very heavily with me. Um, again, I'm not a big fan of the roof decks, um, but by the same token, it's, it's the, the main structure of the house remains. Uh, it, looks, um, it looks good. I like what, what they've done and it is supposed to be a living space. Thank you, Peter. I appreciate your, your comments. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Um, Actimi, after, yeah. So I, I think that I don't see the restoration part. I, I think that the roof line change, raising the roof will mean, and, and with this sort of massing of the addition, the proposed addition, will mean that the original Georgian house becomes subordinate to the addition and dominated by the addition. So I don't see the restoration piece and I don't understand uh, the raising of the roof even by a foot and a half, so. Well, I, 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 will, I will agree that uh, the raising the roof even uh, now that it's been reduced from three feet to a foot and a half, it is visible and it does register. Um, I think the rendering, uh, doesn't it helps but it doesn't do a great job of illustrating you know uh, the the layered fascia whether or not that would soften the impact of that extra foot and a half that your eye registers would not originally have been there but again um, it's I don't I don't find it I don't find it entirely offensive and, and inconsistent I, I think the sort of subordination of the original house to the addition is the most clear in drawing A4. Uh, we're creating a whole new roof line for this house. So I don't know if Andy, if, if you can show us that or not. Yeah, sorry. Could you just clarify which, uh, what perspective you're looking for? Oh, I'm looking for uh, A4 that document A4. Yeah, it might be around page six or so, uh, Andy. Um, hmm. uh, well, this, you're, this. you're saying drawing sheet A4? Yes. Okay. I just, I, I don't well, see, I see drawings that are enabled S. I don't see an A4, I see an A1.4. Is it? Could you clarify? Yeah, I'm, it says A4 on mine, sorry. <clears throat> Guess I'm on the very last page. That must be an er earlier set you're looking at. Oh, could be. Yeah, I, perhaps you're looking at the original filing. Oh yeah, okay, because we, we don't have this drawing in the, in the current one, right? Are you talking, are you talking about the roof, the roof framing drawing? Uh, that's the last. That's the last. Yeah. Page the, right. All yeah. right. That is S four. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the um, difference in the in the in the new drawing is that there's a the roof deck has been doubled. But I'm just saying, in terms of roof line change, this, raising the roof and then create and then creating the new L, which is that high. I mean, this this is a big roof line change. Uh, this uh, was the rendering you're referring to from the original application. Yes. 
which has since been modified, I guess I'll leave that to the applicant to explain, but that's that's the rendering you were referring to. Yeah, so this is Glenn speaking again. I think the main modifications are the, if you look at the lower right um, one, that kind of slightly sloped shed roof type addition, which is currently there, that is gonna be made, that's where the, a new roof deck was put and the second roof deck and, and doors similar to what you see in the rendering that's on the left, lower left corner of this. Does that sound about right, Mr. Kanik? And of course the, the overall height reduced by a foot and a half and some other relatively minor changes. I yes, that's correct. Things. Okay. Um, and so the, the, the L, the camera and the L, their shed, what is this like shed roof things coming off the, I don't understand really. The, coming off the gambrel? Yeah, what is, it looks like it, it hangs over on, yeah, that, Patricia, that, sh that shed roof uh, addition is currently there. Uh, it looks a little different because it's got like, you know, it, it's, it, it's got sort of a very open lower first floor and okay. so on. So that shed roof is changed to what is now proposed to be the second roof deck. Does that help you? Yeah. And, and this rendering shows two windows on that dormer on that side that would be, but that would look more like it looks on the uh, lower left side where it's like a French door or that type of thing. And, and please, you know, if, correct me if I said anything wrong there, uh, Mr. Gannick or. No, no, that, that's correct. Um, like your earlier question, those windows were uh, changed in this latest version to the doors. Right. It, it's the same space. All right. And this the same roof, uh, height and all that. Um, well, uh, you know, I, I think Mr. McNamee kind of summed up uh, the my overall feelings reasonably well as well. Um, I thought about this a lot, and I, and I, uh, I know that um, the when, for example, there were there were architectural things that while would definitely be very inappropriate on the original structure are not necessarily inappropriate on a, on a newer addition. You know, the roof deck being a prime example, but even other things like the, the ganged windows where the windows are uh, very, you know, um, in group, grouped very close together like that. Now they, they didn't do that in the old days. Um, uh, the only thing that I um, would really object to, and that's and it, and it wouldn't affect your cost at all, Mr. Gray, is that the, the corner boards, um, that calls out, and Mr. Gannick, maybe you can talk to this. If I read it correctly, it calls them out at like 10 inches, which is much wider than, than a house of that age would have had. Um, no, the corner boards aren't meant to be that wide. They're, is that a mistake? Uh, is that what the note says? I'm yeah, surprised if that's can, what it says. Yeah, let me see if I can quickly find the page that that's on, because I know it, 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 um, it's early on. I'll see if I can. Yeah, if you go to a page A1.3, Andy, uh, in the upper right, let's see, that's the fascia. Yeah, it says new, let me blow this up because I can read it. Yeah, that's just uh, the rake boards at the roof would be wide, but the corner boards. Oh, it says eight. In, it says new eight inch corner boards throughout. So, okay, so not 10 inches, eight inches, which okay. is still really yeah. significantly wider than they should be. Typically houses of that age is they're like five or six inches. That can easily be done. We um, can use standard one by sixes for corner boards. Yeah, that would be much more appropriate. Okay. Um, uh, well, I think, I feel like we should uh, perhaps hear a motion unless there's someone else uh, on the commission who would like to voice an opinion before we do that. By the way, Mr. Griffin, your, your hand is still up. Did you wanna say something additional or did it just not put it back down yet? I just neglected to hit that button, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, Peter, would you like to uh, make a motion on this? To, uh, I think you had a pretty good summary of, of where this stands. We can take a vote of the commission. Uh, sure, um, 
I would move that uh, we accept the changes as presented, uh, provided there is the detail change to the corner boards. Um, and you have to help me out here, Glenn. Uh, okay, sorry, what, Peter. I forgot. I forgot how new you are. And yeah, that that's fine where you were so far. And 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 basically grant the demolition permit is how that would end. <laughs> okay. Well, and grant the demolition permit then. Yeah. Sorry about that. Is there a second to that? Well, I know a lot of us are on mute. Um, I'll second that. Okay, thank you. Uh, who was that? I didn't recognize the voice. This is Joe. Oh, hi, Joe. Thank you. Okay, so we'll do a roll call vote on that again. Uh, uh, again, uh, just in order that you're showing up on my list here, uh, Patricia. No. Okay. Um, Peter, back to me. Yes. Okay. Um, Christ Christopher Fay. I'm a no. Okay. Uh, um, Joe Morgan. Yes. Okay, um, Malcolm. Yeah. Armuth. Okay, so yes. And uh, Ron, Ron Zamba. Yes. Okay, and um, I'm gonna vote yes as well in this one. So we have one, two, three, four, five yeas, two nays, and so so that uh, passes. And um, uh, so the only uh, additional constraint we're, we're placing on is uh, is the, uh, the corner boards, which you seem both agreeable to. That's a pretty minor change. Um, I would just add, um, um, well, well, I guess there isn't anything I'm gonna add to that, but um, other than that, there, there may be other, you know, there are other things you could do on the, uh, original part of the house that on the work you're undertaking that we didn't really get into because it again it may be as Mr. Griffin points out beyond our our legal scope but I would encourage you to look into I know the the Anderson 400 excuse me 400 series windows that you've specified are available in things like what they call reverse cottage sash design which would uh, replicate the um, uh, pattern of the original windows that you can see on the form B. So that would be a really good thing you could do to um, get the house to look more like it did. Uh, traditionally, that was a, I'm not sure if Nick Anderson could do a 12 over 8, although they probably could. So that's something that um, would should be, you know, you might want to think about. And I didn't uh, even ask you if you, I know they are also available with full divided lights, which would be um, the type of window that we would um, recommend you use. So, I don't know, any comment before we move on to the next thing? Just thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Richards, and uh, to the commission for uh, considering the application. Do you want me to, was, was that, I couldn't tell if that was Mr. Was Gray Mark or was Mark, Mark Griffin. Griffin. Okay, um, Michael Gray, are you amenable to uh, looking into the things I just said about the windows? I am, I am. I'm not opposed to that at all. I just wasn't aware that Anderson would make that. I mean, we were definitely gonna go with the true divided light six over six. Okay. Um, I don't know, you know, what the spacing would require for a 12 over eight or what was proposed, but uh, yeah. I'm happy to look at some renderings that Barry can do for me to, because I wouldn't do those on the sides or anywhere else. It would just be on mm -hmm. the front. I just would like to see how that would look. Yeah, and take a look at the photo that's in the form B, and you can see no, what I'm, I'm talking about. With it. Yes, yes. Yeah, and it's quite possible. It's hard to tell in the front. It looks like they may have already, very often those windows deteriorated and they were uh, updated and they might have been updated well over a hundred years ago to six over sixes. So, you know, six over sixes are not, you know, horrendously inappropriate or anything like that. And um, I'm just, but you can see the 12 over eight on that, um, and that's that view. It looks like Andy is now showing it sure. on the screen. Yeah, you can, you can see, which is a really, uh, very authentic look for a uh, house of that vintage. So definitely worth. I'm not opposed to that on the, yeah. the main structure on the gable and sides, the front of, of exactly. that main structure. I'm yeah. definitely not opposed to that. Yeah. Looks like looking at this picture, looks like they did it on the, uh, they, they 
changed them out on the first floor because you can see in the second floor the division dividing between the upper and lower sash is you know two thirds of the way down and not in the middle so but, but you can take a look at that all right well thanks for coming back a second time mr gray and um and uh, mr griffin and mr gannick appreciate your coming in and laying this out for us thank you thank you thank you very much Okay, we have another item. Um, the next item on the agenda is 32 Franklin Street. That's uh, the applicant is Jeffrey Holmes. Let's see if he's here on the um, attendee list. Yes, and uh, so Jeffrey, you've been allowed to speak if you'd like to introduce yourself. Yes, my name is Jeffrey Holmes and I'm here today. Okay, hi Jeffrey. Um, uh, the, um, so, I'll give a very brief introduction to where we stand with this. This is an application because of the extent of the um, demolition and reconstruction or really the demolition. Uh, the, you require a special permit. And so we, uh, we meaning the Historical Commission is uh, tasked to do a historical report for the, um, I believe it's the ZBA, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Port. Anyway, so we will do that. Um, we had a couple of questions and things we wanted addressed from when we last got together. And it uh, looks like you've pretty much done a good job with that. And we did have the, one of the things we were most concerned about was to verify that the addition uh, was truly um, in tough enough shape that, uh, you know, rebuilding it and repairing it wasn't a viable proposition. And we did have the uh, uh, building commissioner out there to take a look at it. And he, and he did confirm that that was the case. So we do have independent confirmation of that, which is which is very good. And you've also submitted some photos and uh, 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 the, the building commissioner submitted some as well that kind of confirmed what you had already showed us. You've also done, uh, made some quite major changes to your pro pro proposal. So I'll um, let you speak uh, and kind of lay out what you've um, done and what you're currently proposing to do and um, we can take it from there. All right, well, thank you, Chair. So what we've done is we've basically just gone back to the original structure and what it is. It's two stories. The only thing we're looking to physically change on the whole thing is to just get a little bit more head height on the second floor. Um, as it is right now, the exterior walls, as you can see by the picture that's on the screen, or even by this one, um, the window, the, the top of the window is even with the top of the interior walls on the second floor, uh, therefore not allowing you to put closet doors up against the outside wall, and not even allowing you to actually stand up against an outside wall on the second floor. So what we're proposing is, is under two feet um, additional height space just for the second floor fact. The um, building inspector did approve that we could keep the first floor at the height that it's at in order to line up our second floor landing coming through on the inside of the house. Mm -hmm. um, but he was um, you know, not opposed to allowing us to do that. And we're just looking to get the seven feet on the inside on the second floor for code and for closet doors. Okay. Uh <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Holmes. And, and I would add that um, for those not familiar with this case, I think most of the commissioners are, you've made um, a significant reduction. Um, a lot of the feedback you no doubt <laughs> heard and you must, and obviously you were paying attention because you made significant changes. Uh, a lot of the opposition to the first proposal was that it was too, too high, uh, kind of towered over your one of particularly the abutter to the rear uh and also that you know the scale just seemed out of proportion to the main house which uh, as we can see is is quite small uh your new proposal is considerably improved in terms of uh, size and scale and all that and uh, one of those drawings you had up there it looks like what was it like one foot four inch is the maybe that was the one right before this uh and the showed that the height difference between the roof line, the, uh, the, you know, the peak roof height of the original house versus the addition. I, I, I went to go back and look, but you had moved off of it. Um, can you go back one? 
Yeah, this, uh, is, this is the, or maybe it's just the height. Let's see. I ju just want to make sure I understand which. Uh, oh, I see it. Okay, no, you're on the right one. You're on the right one. So I'm looking at if you look at the east elevations sketch there or or layout. If you look towards the left side of it, it says one foot four inches. That looks like the difference between the top of the original structure and the top of the addition. Do I have that right? It looks as though you do. Okay. So we're only going up, you know, one foot, four inches. All right. Anything else you'd like to comment on it? Uh, Mr. Holmes? Um, no, I, I think that's about it. I'm just looking for um, permission to, to demo and move forward. Um, okay. Forward to having small living space. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. I'll turn it over to my fellow commissioners. Would anyone like to have a, a comment uh, or express an opinion or anything of the on this? I, I'd like to say, I think that that uh, looks good. Malcolm. It, yeah, that sounds like Malcolm Carmer. Thank you, Malcolm. And I uh, do see a hand being raised. There's um, in, the, in the public. Do you see that, Andy? Um, it yes. Just says, uh, I assume that's probably uh, Attorney Mead. Yes, Lisa's been unmuted. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Lisa Mead, Mead Teller McCosta, 30 Green Street, on behalf of uh, Patty Snyder of 15 Salem Street and Robin Mary Swenson of 30 Franklin Street. Um, so first, let me say that uh, both the Swensons and um, Ms. Snyder are uh, appreciative of uh, the reduction of the uh, and the changes from the original proposal. Um, I do want to clarify and just make sure of a couple of things. So on this west elevation, which is the rear elevation, uh, it shows no openings. And I want to confirm that, in fact, that's the case. Yes, that is the case. OK. And then um, the applicant still has not submitted a, um, a, a survey plan. Uh, I know the applicant needs to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals um, prior to any work, but um, that is a, it's a significant issue because of how tight this lot is. Uh, that back wall literally comes down inches from uh, 15 Salem Street's backyard, um, literally patio, and her house is probably seven feet from that wall. Um, then the fence on the left side, which runs to 32 uh, Franklin Street, the Swinsons, um, you know, it's a couple of feet in there. And um, similarly on the left hand side, as you as you look at it. So um, the construction of this and the deconstruction of this is going to be very difficult and there will be significant impacts on the neighbors. And so um, because there is no site plan, um, it's impossible to know um, what those lines really are. And that literally that back wall is probably about seven feet from the door into 15 Salem Street. And um, it's on the line. And so, they're very concerned about that. Um, and the, so the, the demolition plan and the reconstruction plan are incredibly important. And the required survey that should be a part of these applications and the application to the ZBA has yet to be submitted. Okay. Thank you, Attorney. Yeah, Mayor. this is Patricia. I agree that their survey is very important and I really would encourage uh, the applicant to work with uh, number 15 Salem Street. I assume that uh, she is pleased that the windows have been removed from the west elevation to not only preserve her privacy, but probably increase it at this point. So. Yes, and that's why I wanted to confirm that, in fact, there weren't any openings. And, and they're appreciative of the changes that were made, but they are, there's, there is really, really tight. And yeah. any work is going to end up on her patio. And any work on the right-hand side, as you, as you see, um, I just don't know 
you can see the difference between to the top here. That's that's the Franklin Street property. That's 32 Franklin Street. I don't know how you get a machine down there to take apart that house and dig a foundation. The back wall. So you the yellow line here is actually not accurate. It's actually ro almost right on the back wall of that house. I think I don't have a survey, but if you're in the backyard, that's what it's like, and that's what the plot plan would show. Um, I just don't know how the construction happens. So, yep. and I don't know how you dig a foundation. Yep. Well, thank you, Ms. Mead. Appreciate uh, your comments, and uh, I will take those into consideration. Uh, I, I will in the report to the uh, to the ZBA. Of course, uh, I'm going to. Um, well, they're going to, you know, I'm sure they will require that site plan anyway, but I will, even though that's not normally our purview, I'll even mention that in, in my comments to them that uh, because of the unusual nature of the, the layout of this particular property, the size and how close the construction is to the, uh, the plot, the uh, boundary lines. So, yeah, I'll, I'll mention that in the report. I will also add, just to satisfy my own curiosity, I, I continued to research the deed and if the owners want to write it down for their record. I couldn't find the earliest deed. I could only get back to 1821, at which point it was owned by the wheelwrights who, wow, they owned everything. Um, so there are dozens and dozens of uh, wheelwright deeds, but somebody with more skill than I have could use the probate records and get back into the 1700s. But in case they're interested, it's it's um, uh, the book and page art, uh, book 227, page 263, 227, 263. Thank you. That's 1821, but it's, the house was there then, so you can get back further if, if you can find a title examiner to do it. Yeah, so yeah, my parents did do some research on the house and I think they did get back to the, the late 1700s. Oh, good for them. Then I'd like to know. You'll have to tell Taylor. me because I couldn't get past the wheel rights. Thanks. I do have everything written down. I just don't have it handy. At the yeah, moment. great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Would any other, any of the other, Lisa, your hand is still up. Is that just... Uh, no, thank you. I forgot to take it down. Okay, very good. So, Mr. Um, Chair, I would like yeah. to say that there is a survey underway. Um, everything's been delayed um, because of our current situation, but we have secured someone to do it. Uh, we are on their schedule, and it will be done as soon as possible. We've been informed. Okay. Uh, that was Mr. Grace, excuse me, Mr. Holmes speaking? Correct. Yeah, thank you. And I see uh, Ron Zimba, you've got a hand raised. Did you want to make a comment? Yes, I just wanted to say that I I did not uh, participate in the dis first discussion that you had on this property, uh, but I can see um, that uh, you've done a lot of work on being responsive to the commentary of the um, commission. So I appreciate that. And uh, this is really a tight squeeze, boy. <laughs> um, but, uh, Thank you, uh, Chairperson. But that's just part of living in the South End of Newburyport. You, you buy houses that are right on top of other ones. I guess that's right. I guess that's right. Oh, and in your case, oh, I, even more so than most. Uh, correct. Mr. Holmes. Okay, thank you, Mom. Were you done? I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I am done. All right, thanks. Would anyone else like to make a comment? Um, I mean, I feel like, uh, I feel personally like I have enough information to, to uh, write the historical report, um, but um, well, I'll certainly wanna give you all a chance to make any comment before we close this topic. Going once, going twice. Okay, I guess it's sold. Okay, so, so, um, Mr. Holmes, we'll, we'll, I'll go ahead and write up a historical report for the ZBA. You, you know, you should, as I'm glad to hear that you've got um, a survey kind of lined up as soon as, you know, I know with all this coronavirus, Michigan, every, you know, everything is messed up, just put it that way. Um, uh, I, you're not already on uh, a ZBA agenda, I assume, or are you? No, not yet. 
Okay. All right. So there, there's that coming. And I know you've, you know, all this whole thing has been a long time coming. So <laughs> I don't know, a few days, a few weeks. I mean, you've, you've I, I'm sure you're, you a must months. be used to, yeah, a few months, a few years, whatever. I'm sure you're, uh, you're used to having to, to wait things out. And, uh, and I, you know, it's been said by others on this call and in this meeting and in prior meetings, but it's, and I'm sure you realize that it's, it is going to be quite a challenge. Uh, I agree with uh, some of the comments that have been made that uh, it's tough to see how that's going to be executed, but Hey, you know, uh, there's lots of things that, uh, you know, builders can figure out a way of doing uh, somehow or other. So maybe you'll be able to, to, to do it and, and, and be all set. Okay, so on that note, um, we can, I think we can move, I don't see a need for any particular motion other than, uh, well, just to be to kind of formally end it off, I guess I will make a motion that the, the board um, uh, approves the, 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 the chair will take the comments made into consideration and write up a historical report for the ZBA. Would anyone like to second that motion? I second. Okay. Okay. Um, again, to order Malk top at this point, Mr. Carmo. Yeah, I'm in Okay, favor. that sounded like an I, yes. Okay, Patricia Pecknick. Yes. Yes, okay. Mr. Fay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McNamee. Yes. Okay, Mr. Morgan. Yes. And uh, Mr. Zimba. Yes. Okay, I think that's everybody. Thank you very much. And, and um, I guess I can be recorded as a yes, if that makes any sense. All right, thank you. Can you go back to our agenda, uh, please, Andrew? Ah, the Museum of Old Newbury CPC application. Um, and I, I believe we have uh, Susan Edwards here to um, speak to this. Um, um, I have to admit right off the bat that um, this is when I haven't done a whole lot of delving into myself uh, prior to this call other than to know that it's on here and the gist of what's being sought. So I'll go ahead and turn it. You are, your audio is enabled, uh, Ms. Edwards, so you yes. can go ahead and, and speak to uh, tell us what this is all about. Thank you. Um, my name is Susan Edwards. I'm the, uh, the director of the Historical Society of Old Newbury. Um, in uh, each, each year for the past several years, we have been putting in applications to um, the Community Preservation uh, Committee for um, uh, preservation projects. Uh, two years ago, uh, the, uh, the committee funded um, phase one of a three-phase program um, to improve um, the laundry yard, the cobble courtyard, and the uh, Northwest Garden uh, of the Cushing House. And so our proposal in front of the, um, of the committee this year is for phase two, which is the area uh, that you see here. Uh, when I made my presentation um, a few weeks ago to, uh, to the committee, uh, they asked whether or not the commission, the historical commission supported it uh, because there was not a letter um, stating that and I had um, told them that I had asked, uh, sent out a request for that at the beginning of the year, but I think it obviously got mislaid um, so that uh, we don't have a letter of support. So I'm here tonight to seek uh, your support on this project and to write a letter to the Community Preservation Committee uh, saying that. But to give you a little bit more about um, the project, um, in 2016, we were awarded a grant from Mass Historical Commission uh, matched by local foundations to create a preservation plan for the landscape, the designed landscape at the Cushing House. Um, the first phase was the laundry yard, which was um, completed uh, last summer. Um, the area that you see here is the largest cobbled area um, that runs from the privy and the shed to the carriage barn and then uh, through a gate beyond that to the Perkins Mint. And this area provides really the only access uh, to the Perkins Mint, especially since the work um, at uh, 1618 Fruit Street has been completed. 
um, we still have an easement to access the, the Perkins building from, from that driveway, but it, there, the driveway has been lowered so much, the only access is through our property. So the, the plan calls for removing all of the cobblestones that you see here, uh, which are contemporary with the Cushing House, 1808. Um, we had an archeological survey done uh, along with the other projects for the Mass Historical Commission grant. And we have a report on that. Uh, and that's how they were able to tell that the cobblestones were contemporary with the house. Um, they did not see anything significant um, that uh, would not allow us to remove the cobblestones. So they are endorsing uh, this project. Um, the plan calls for removing all of the cobblestones, uh, cleaning them, um, doing uh, a grading, drainage, uh, and then um, uh, uh, subsurfaces and replacing uh, the original cobblestones. The, uh, in order to make the, the um, courtyard barrier free, which was uh, a strong recommendation of Mass Historical Commission, uh, after working with our landscape architect and um, the preservation planners with MHC, uh, we came up with um, the idea of putting a granite path through the cobble courtyard so that it would be barrier free. Uh, it would not go uh, right through the center of the courtyard, but it would go along one side. You see a grassed area to, um, to the side of the, of the uh, uh, courtyard. So it would go straight through and lead into the garden and then down into the Perkins Mint. It would not be um, modern granite. It would be um, used antique granite so that it would be compatible uh, with the, the cobblestones. One of the questions that the, the uh, uh, preservation uh, committee asked was um, whether or not it will look markedly different from the way it was originally uh, laid. And my answer to that was no, that uh, it will look as it was laid. It will be a textured but even surface. And what you're seeing now um, is because the substrata is, is not good. Um, two centuries of freeze, thaw, and bad drainage. Uh, so it will look more like the original and we will use all of the existing materials. The, um, the other part of this project, if Andy, you could show this, the, the photograph that has the fence that runs between um, the privy and the carriage barn. What you're seeing now in this photograph is a fence that was uh, reconstructed based on the original plan, uh, which is a lattice fence. And there's also a lattice fence running along the other side of the courtyard. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure that I have the uh, rendering, you're, the photograph you're looking for. And just so I'm oriented, if this picture, uh, it says courtyard showing uneven levels and cistern. Are we looking towards Fruit Street here? Or we are looking else? towards Fruit Street. So this photograph was taken um, from the carriage barn, uh, looking towards Fruit Street. And, and the other thing that would be done would be that the, the cistern uh, and the well cover would be made level with um, the rest of the, um, the courtyard. Also the sod that you see to the left, um, has become higher and higher over the years. Right. That would also be graded so and would be uh, resodded. So that that would be a, a grass surface. The uh, trees and the shrubs that are there are not historic. They are not what was um, on the property when the uh, period of during the period of significance when the Cushing family lived there. So they had um, dwarf uh, fruit trees, and we would replace uh, those uh, that area with the dwarf fruit trees. That is not part of this application, however, that is, is something else. So this is the fence leading to the garden, and that is a relatively um, recently reconstructed fence. So that one will stay the same, but it shows you the access from the courtyard into the formal garden and then behind the carriage house to the Perkins Mint. Okay, so look, so this top upper photo where there's some guy that, a black and white picture with someone with a red backpack or something. Um, He's That's, a surveyor. 
Okay, that is as if uh, we were standing to the left side of that previous picture and turned to the right and we're looking up towards High Street now? You are now looking at High Street, that's correct. Okay. Yeah, I noticed in some, uh, uh, this reminds me in that for other picture, like this guy's got, you know, the red vest and the blue hat here. So what, what, what's with the strange colors? I noticed in the other pictures, some of the cobbles were blue. Is that just an artifact of, of the reproduction of some sort or what's when, going on? When you that? actually look at the original photographs, um, the cobbles do not have that turquoise tint to them. I think it must be something with a projection or the, the screens. Um, the the two the surveyors um, who who surveyed the entire property as part of the um, MHC grant he did actually have a red backpack and the other guy had a blue baseball cap. <laughs> okay, all right. And and this might sound like a silly question, but because of the words you use, um, you know, removing the cobbles and putting the same cobbles back. I, I'm, I'm going to make a wild guess here that you're not going to attempt to put each cobble back in its original place. Well, we discussed that with MHC and, uh, and they said, absolutely, we do not require that. As long as you um, salvage the original cobbles and replace them so that they make a textured and even surface, uh, we do not require that. So no, we are not going to put the same cobbles in the same. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that would be, that would be a bit of a chore. But and, we uh, thought about it. Yeah. Well, and one last question on these cobbles, because I think of cobbles like, you know, Brooklyn cobbles where they're, or Holland, you know, curb cobbles where they're uh, rectilinear, right? These look more like stones with a surface, top, upper surface that's eh, kind of sort of flat, but not really. So, um, uh, I mean, you know, what can we say about what can you say about that? Is it is it are those stones such that if they're correctly oriented, they'll be they have a relatively flat top side to, you know, to be on top? They, they do have um, a, a flatter side than what you see here. Um, I also um, have some photographs that I submitted uh, that show the phase one work that was completed. So you'll see the difference between these cobblestones and um, the finished product, and that's what it would look like. Um, oh, okay, so there's a, there's a picture of a cobbled area that you've redone already? Yes, um, oh, yeah. and, and a lot of people refer to these, a lot of people refer to them as cobblestones, a lot of people refer to them as river stones. There are other people who say that they were ballast in ships, um, but it is, you know, an intact working landscape, which is why we feel that it's important to um, preserve it to make it as accessible as possible and especially with the granite path and to be able to use it for uh, public programs and events. Yeah, All right. And I, and I appreciate that um, even where you're updating it to make it the more accessible that you're trying to do it in a way that is going to look, um, that, but that's not gonna be too jarring uh, in terms of the, the historical appearance of everything. Now, I think we're on photograph 15 now. Yes, if we go we to are. photograph 16, you'll see the other fence that I made reference to. Um, it's uh, very badly rotted. Um, it will look, uh, it will have the lattice pattern as this one does. Um, we will we'll use, um, with, when we have replaced all of our fences, we have been using mahogany. Uh, and the only difference with this that again was uh, approved by Mass uh, Historical Commission was that we would put a gate into this one so that we could have access to the cart path on the other side of the fence. Well, you make the gate similar to the other one to the, to the that, that we saw in the other photograph. It has like that sort of an arched uh, opening effect. No, it will it will match this fence. I see. But it will have um, you know it will have a, a, a hinge and a latch on it. Oh, okay, yeah, that other one I guess that was more of a picket fence. Right. So do you know which photograph shows the recobbled uh, area? Uh, this is Andy. Yeah, I looked through the images. I didn't quite see that photograph. Do you know which one that is, Susan? Well, I it, they were the ones that I sent in. Um, to Caitlin for the uh, presentation to, to the Community Preservation Committee. Okay, uh, give me one moment. I might be able to pull that up. Okay. Well, They're under the link of the application, Andy. It says like yard one, yard two. That's right. 
Laundry yard yeah. one, laundry yard yeah. two. Sorry. Yep. One sec. I'll pull those up. Okay. While he's doing that, any member of the commission uh, have any comment or questions? Yeah, Ron, I see your hand. Go ahead. You can speak. Yes, I just I just like to uh, make one quick comment in terms of the letter that you'll be writing for uh, the museum, and that is that uh, this really is a very significant step for this museum. I think it uh, knits together the various pieces on the property better than they have been since they were new. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a significant uh, uh, accomplishment here. And so what you have is a very good picture of a way a family of means lived during that period. It's more than a museum now. It's a, it's a piece of the Newburyport's history. And so uh, just, just a, a sideline comment there. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ron. Thank yeah, thank you, Ron. So right, right here you see um, uh, a side area um, that was um, that was redone along with um, original granite that was already there, and then a new brick path that is um, uh, the width was increased for um, barrier free access. And uh, if you could go back, I think to the one the one that you had before, and was there another one before that? Yeah, um, and you, you can't really see the difference uh, between the, the courtyard beyond and, and this, but you can see that this is, like I said, textured, but even, uh, yeah. whereas the other is very undulating right. and, and is a hazard. Right. Yeah, you can, you can see it somewhat, but yeah, it is a little, it's off in the distance. Um, yeah, a quick question on what the CPC is asking for, um, Ms. Edwards, the, um, are they, is it, sort of a generic um, letter expressing our support of the project or like I know in the previous one that it was uh, specifically looking for our um, determination that uh, there was a cultural resource quote unquote to be uh, protected which is one of the uh, criteria for disbursement of uh, CPC funds. Did they say specifically which they were? Um or we this can really Andy. kind of do both. Yeah, go ahead, Andrew. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Glenn. Uh, sorry. This is Andy. Um, you know, the, the commission is really, I think, looking for a confirmation that the historical commission, I, I think two things, if they could be expressed in the letter, again, this is up to the commission, but um, one that um, that it's appropriate, the work that's being proposed is, is appropriate, which uh, I, know, I, I certainly don't take any issue with. I think it's a great project. Um, and I think also that it's, uh, it warrants funding in this cycle. Um, because the preservation committee ultimately makes their recommendations to the city council for the funding appropriation. Um, mm -hmm. So essentially the committee that makes the recommendation on CPA funds is looking for a recommendation from the historical commission that has expertise in historical preservation work um, okay. to um, verify that it's appropriate and that it's, it's appropriate to fund this project uh, this year. Okay, thank you. So that, that sounds all right. Is, it, is there was any, do you want to add anything to that? I, I do want to add just a couple of things. Um, one of the things that, um, that I reminded the um, uh, preservation committee of is the fact that um, the house and design landscape um, at 98 High Street uh, is the only national historic landmark in Newburyport. So um, clearly it, it does have a strong cultural significance uh, in the community. And, and the other comment that I'd like to make is that um, despite the fact that the museum is currently closed because of COVID-19, um, our grounds are open and um, the people who have uh, been on site and our neighbors have reported that there have been an incredible number of people socially distancing, but relaxing in the garden and using it as sort of an oasis and a retreat um, during the pandemic. Interesting. So it's, it's clearly loved by the community, I think. Yeah. Well, I don't, th <laughs> I don't think uh, many will disagree with that. So one last call for any comment from my fellow commissioners. I just have a question that might seem a little uh, trivial, but um, what, what happens to the, hall? I didn't know Holly and Quince were not period appropriate. Do you donate it somewhere? 
or stuff well, you have to dig up? Uh, there, there, the holly especially is, is really wonderful. Um, what we are hoping to do is to take cuttings from the holly and transplant um, a part of it um, to the uh, back uh, garden, which is a vegetable garden and is used for propagation. Uh -huh. But um, so, so that it won't be uh, completely destroyed, but uh, it's, it's not appropriate to this period of this garden. Yeah, very interesting. Thanks. Okay. Well, then I would like to make a motion. This is Glenn speaking. Uh, make a motion to that the commission vote to uh, empower the, the chair namely me, <laughs> to go ahead and write a letter expressing our uh, support of the proposed changes that they are um, com compatible with uh, the uh, historic aspect of the property and uh, certainly not, uh, on the contrary, not only do they not uh, detract from it, they improve it and that we support uh, the, the project. As, would anyone like to second that motion? I, uh, this is Ron. I second it. Okay, thanks, Ron. So we'll go through our usual roll call. Uh, I see Malcolm, you're on top again. Uh, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes, Malcolm. Uh, Patricia Picknick? Yes. Yes. Okay, Ron Zimba? Yes. Thank you. Christopher Fay? Yes. Thank you. Joe Morgan? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Peter McNamee? Yes. Okay. And Obviously, I'm a yes as well. Okay, well, that one's unanimous. Well, thank you very much. And Susan, thank you for your um, time. yeah, uh, I should be able to get that uh, to you probably through uh, Caitlin or whatever, but uh, that shouldn't take, I don't know, more than a couple of days. Um, certainly, sometime next week, that should be all ready for you. Um, thank you. And uh, uh, so that, uh, you know, looks like, uh, you know, uh, th th those grounds are really uh, remarkable and you know you guys do do just an incredible job and I never cease to be impressed if not amazed by the professionalism and the dedication to uh, authenticity and everything else that you guys do it's it's really great thank you um, I know that the co the, the uh, preservation committee was hoping to have a letter by the time they meet later this month when they deliberate on the proposals okay do you know so what again, date that is by any chance uh, Caitlin knows. I, I I don't have it, the date in front of me here. 26th or 27th, I believe. It's the 27th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we next week would be perfectly fine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that sounds Thank you again. I very much appreciate it. You're welcome, Ms. Edwards. And I think uh, uh, that timeline should be fine. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Port, for putting back the agenda. It looks like the one remaining thing is the approval of uh, the minutes. Yep. Yes. Mr. Chair, after, I guess, after the approval of the minutes, and I could do, I guess, after the adjournment, could we have a quick uh, conversation with uh, Andy and Caitlin and the people on the commission, but without the, anyone in the public or listening in? Well, I'm not sure um, if that would be a violation of open meeting laws, though, if, if all the commission is there. Um, and is, is that, what do you think of that? Yeah, I, you know, I, Glenn, I think is correct. Um, Patricia, I think that's, uh, that would be a violation of the open meeting law. I mean, if there's something in particular you wanted to coordinate with the office, and uh, I'm not sure what the subject matter is, but I do agree with Glenn that um, the, co the commission, is, you know, meeting in a quorum and having discussion um, outside the public view would potentially be a violation of the oh, open. I was just really going to ask you and Caitlin about uh, about jurisdiction and to clarify something. Oh, yeah. I think um, what I may, might suggest actually is perhaps we could have a follow-up. Uh, you know, tomorrow I think would be too difficult for us to schedule, but sometime next week. And then uh, if we have that discussion and, and flush out uh, the types of questions or concerns you want to raise or have addressed, and then we could circle back at the next commission meeting, perhaps uh, Caitlin can ask Diane to put on the agenda a discussion item um, of uh, basically a discussion item about the commission's jurisdiction or clarification of the commission's jurisdiction um, as a discussion matter. That could be at the beginning or end of the meeting, whatever you prefer, um, I think at the end maybe. But, um, but and that way you could have that discussion as a commission, but we could flush out what it is you're looking for in advance of the meeting um, and not run afoul of the open meeting law. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds like a good proposal, uh, Andrew. Thank you, <clears throat> or Andy. 
since most of the public has left, I guess I can revert to Andy. <laughs> okay, the minutes, um, uh, Gretchen made some uh, minor ch uh, changes to the minutes from 423. Hopefully you've had a chance to review those. I know uh, they were relatively minor. There was one about uh, uh, the, the size, you know, a dimension of the, the boards on the, the Harrison Street property and so on. Uh, thank you, Gretchen, for, for that update. Uh, is it, has everyone had a chance to review the minutes and can we have a motion to approve those? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from last. Thank you, Mr. Fay. Um, and sound like Mr. Mel Mr. Carnwath has uh, seconded. So we'll go through our, our <laughs> same routine. For some reason now, Christopher Fay is on top of my list. So uh, Mr. Fay? Yes. Okay, Mr. Carnwath? Yes. That sounded like a yes, is that right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Ms. Pecknick? Yes. Okay, Mr. Zemba? Yes. Mr. Morgan? Yes. And Mr. McNamee? Yes. Okay, so that's unanimous. Uh, so the only other official business we have to conduct is a motion to adjourn, unless anyone, before we do that, if does anyone has any things to bring before, you know, us as a whole before we do that? If not, we can entertain a motion to adjourn. I would, I would just, uh, um, I guess, uh, concur with Patricia that th there seems to be some confusion, I guess, about what our purview is. So it'd be good to go back over that. So I should have said that earlier. I apologize, but um, yep. that's all. It's one of my two cents. And because uh, we're having people come in and say you can't do this, and you know, this is the first time I've heard that we're we having can't. attorneys come in and say yeah, you it's do really it. an attorney thing. I agree. So. I would just, I don't want to go any further with it, but I, I think that we should probably put that on the agenda for next time. Yep, yep, I agree. And I have uh, very similar concerns, uh, uh, Chris and, and Patricia, as, as you two have expressed. And uh, uh, even without you saying specifically what they are, I think I have, can get a pretty, make a pretty good guess as to what some of the concerns are. And so Andy, we yeah, definitely I... look forward to, you know, working out uh, something and, and, and in the full meeting we can, you know, have that all out so that everyone's on the same yeah. page. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, and I think that's a great idea. I think, frankly, this issue, I think with the Historical Commission, perhaps more than any other board, has come up a number of times over the years that I have seen um, where applicants and potentially attorneys um, are stretching as best they can for their applicants and their clients, um, you know, an argument as to whether or not the commission has jurisdiction over something, for instance, a roof line change and whether or not other work proposed is somehow related to that or not. So um, I think that's a great discussion to have. I would suggest that, um, you know, Caitlin and I can, can work with the chair and vice chair to schedule a discussion sometime next week. But if we could, um, we'll have that, we can add that to the next agenda. Um, if that works. And then um, if, if commission members uh, to sort of speed up and make sure we're comprehensive in our discussion um, and the information uh, or clarification we provide at the next meeting, um, I might suggest that you uh, individual members just send to Caitlin and I, uh, or just to Caitlin even, um, the questions that you have or concerns that you have uh, as best you can sort of uh, type them up, maybe a couple of bullets. And that way, when we have that discussion and circle back with you at your next meeting, we can make sure to cover any of the nuances or areas you're concerned about. Um, um, Andy, are we allowed to CC people on the commission with the questions or should they just be to you and Caitlin? Yeah, and that's why I suggest that you send those to us and that, like I said, okay. you know, all those all those issues can be discussed at the, the public meeting, but I think it'll give us the opportunity as staff to make sure we've got um, that information or clarification on the nuances for you, um, but at, that way we're we're not having committee members discuss um, you know important subject matter that uh, might be purview of the open meeting law um, outside of public meeting. So I you know that's where the, the commission members are not deliberating or um, discussing matters outside the public forum. Yeah, let me okay. clarify something because it sounded like Andy said it was okay to copy everyone. Uh, I don't think that's the case. No, I, I, yeah. no, no. What, I'm suggesting that folks send that, as Patricia said, to send it to us as staff, and and we would then circle back with you at your next public meeting where we would discuss right. it collectively. Yeah, yeah. Because the danger, uh, Patricia, is that if let's say I sent a note to uh, Andy or. or or Caitlin or whatever and copied you all and then people start replying to all of that it becomes a deliberation that's outside of public meeting and that's where we're okay at. you know and I wasn't I understand that I wasn't even thinking of it as a deliberation I was just thinking of it as a 
you know, a job description. Like, here's what you can do, here's what I can't do. I didn't know that would violate the open meeting law, but I do understand that now, and I will send my questions only to Caitlin and Andy, and they can aggregate all that and, comp you know, we'll talk about it as a... Yeah, but when, but, right, but, and that will be, and we'll all get that once, once we do get it all together in an, in an official public meeting, we can certainly go over those because that's, you know, that's certainly public and, um, and we'll, we'll get on the same page, including anyone in the public that happens to be interested. Who knows, maybe an attorney will be there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there anything else? other than a motion to adjourn or, or a motion to adjourn. Either one was okay, as far as I'm concerned. So moved. Okay, someone has sounded like the, Malcolm sounding from, from the other side of the field has <laughs> suggested a motion to adjourn. Is it, <laughs> is it seconded? All right, I'll second it. Uh, I guess we gotta do the roll call again. Mr. Fay. Yes. Malcolm. Yes. Ms. Pecknick. Yes. Mr. Zimba. Yes. Mr. Morgan. Yes. Mr. McNamee. Yes. Okay, we are unanimous in that. Well, thank you all very much. Um, you know, I, I and um, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to have this discussion about uh, jurisdiction and exactly where, you know, to try to make some of those areas that seem like gray areas a little less gray. So, uh, but for now we're adjourned. So thank you very much, Andrew, for your help in uh, running the meeting and Caitlin for, for being here um, later than your usual Thursday night, <laughs> work night. Uh, uh, Andy, you're getting tired of running all these meetings yet? <laughs> um, I can't tell you how many Zoom meetings during the day and at night I've been doing, but um, no, I'm getting quite used to it. I mean, it, it is time consuming, but it's, um, it's actually starting to get a little smoother, and I think at least it's allowing us to clear our dockets because um, I can't imagine us having physical public meetings yeah. for some time. Um, you know, again, we have to follow the health protocols, right. but that being said, I think it behooves us all to um, do what we can online. Yep, and um, and we got everybody in. Got uh, Ron Zemba, you know, and and Malcolm. We know uh, we got everybody in. What so that's that's great, and um, so we'll see you in two weeks. I think it's on the twenty eighth. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good work. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.